Our next speaker is a native of Norco. He's in his third year as a head coach of the Nichols Colonels, and he guided them to their first winning season in 11 years a year ago. He's recruited Louisiana aggressively. 58 of the 64 signees are from this state. Previously an assistant in Nichols, also at UL Lafayette and ULM, and on the prep level as a head coach of a highly successful program at Destrehan, a graduate of Destrehan and LSU, and now 5 and 2 after a 29 to 20 win over Abilene Christian ranked 20th in this week's national poll. The Colonels will play at Incarnate Word. It's coming Saturday at 2 p.m. in San Antonio in Southland Conference play. Please give a very warm, great New Orleans Sports Foundation quarterback club welcome to Coach Tim Rebo of the Nichols Colonels. Tim? You know, it's funny, Pilar, uh, it's an omen. I heard list those schools on where you want to go. The only thing I heard was Nichols. I didn't hear those other schools. So. <laughs> I'm a nursing program, but you know, I know your mom and dad well. And, and let me tell you something, it's great to be here, and I, it's such a fraternity in the coaching business, and all these guys that Slade and Rob and everybody we're around. And, but it's funny, Robert, you didn't say that early when you were talking to me about Ryan's team, about your plan, about how sorry you were up front and y'all would run over. But I don't know about that, Ryan, so <laughs> just be ready to go. Um, I'm very fortunate to be here, and I know I get to go out and speak, and. Uh, and, and being from Norco and, and my career, I'm, I'm fortunate to spend my whole career in the state of Louisiana. And uh, you know, you're taking a path, to become a high school head coach at an early age, and then you took a leap and got into college in the 90s and, and went to Nichols and I moved on to Monroe and then I spent 11 years in uh, Lafayette as an assistant. And that's difficult to do in the, in the college uh, uh, age today to stay in one place for so long. And I, I brag that both of my children uh, graduated from one high school, and, that, and that's hard to do. Uh, and then I'm, I was very fortunate to get a chance to come back and coach at Nickel State. And uh, I got it, my hats off, and I got to tip the cap to the guy right here who's sitting in the audience, uh, Rob Bernardi, who was the AD who brought me back to Nichols. And Rob, I want to thank you publicly for doing that, and uh, it, it's been fun so far, I tell you. It has been fun. So, but I knew this. When I took the job three years ago, Nichols had been down. Uh, it, it was 0-12, and, and we talked about it. There was only one place to go, it was up. But uh, growing up in the area and knowing the place and, and, and knowing that my brother played there in the 70s and I spent all, a lot of time there and coming back in the 90s, I, I knew it could be a special place. And I knew this, that if you, if you could win with good people. And so uh, I knew I had to go out and get a, a bunch of good coaches and I did that and, and a fantastic staff. And uh, where we are at the FCS level, those guys, and most of them have been with me for three years. And uh, this past year, nobody left the staff. So uh, I, I went out and found, I mean, I got high school coaches, people you work with, people you trust, but really good people. And it's all about the relationships. And uh, we have a special relationships on our staff. Uh, we have it with our players, and our coaches have it in the community, and, and with the coaches and the high school coaches, they go out. So, you know, in saying that, now it's easy to go out and, and go to De La Salle and go to St. James and go to Edna Carr and go to uh, Sophie B. Wright, uh, you know, so to go to the schools locally and go along the river, um, it, it's easy to do that. When, when we were putting this uh, plan together a couple of years ago, we, we thought about what we needed to do to stay local and, and, and for many different reasons is that uh, local players, they're so good here. The, the number one reason is why everybody comes to South Louisiana to recruit, because they got them all right here. And they all can't go to LSU. They all can't go to Tulane. They all can't go to these places. So we have to identify those players that can fit into our program and, and, and be successful. And we also knew this, that if you bring uh, the people locally, it's going to bring grandmas and grandpas and put them in the stands. And when they finish playing, they're going to be around here, stay around here, and want to come back. So, I mean, there was, there was a lot of reasons why um, that we felt like we could be successful in Thibodeau. It's, it's a hidden gem. I'm telling you, I, I would get people all the time. We bring them from New Orleans recruiting, and they say, man, we didn't know you had this here. We didn't know all of this stuff you had. And, and it's been a great place so far. When we, when we started, we told our players this, too, is that um, you have to put – a decent product on the field. And if you put a decent product on the field, then the people will come. And we've proven that for the last uh, couple years how our attendance has, has increased and more and more people in the support that we're getting um, in, in the area. So, you know, we have a certain brand that we talk about for our guys. 
uh, and I and I and they, they say I'm crazy, okay? But you know, I, I learned this. Everything we ever do, we steal from other people. You know that in this business. And and we talked about a brand that we want to be. Is we want to be a hardworking, competitive, tough football team that never quits. And if we go out and do that every day, you're not going to win every game. But if you go do that every day, and, and that's what the people see, then they'll come out and support you, and you're going to have more success. And I, and I use the analogy all the time about uh, a Diet Coke, and I drink Diet Cokes, and I tell them this, is that when I see that Diet Coke, and I open up the Diet Coke can, I know what I'm getting every single time, and that's what it's going to be, okay? I don't open up the Diet Coke, and it's milk in there, and it's something different. So, uh, and I use that in my speeches to them all the time, that, we'll, that when, them, when Nichols runs on the field, whether it be home, away, Gidry Stadium, it doesn't matter that these people know the product that they're going to get. And a lot of people are going to respect that and do that. Um, so far, uh, what, what we've done this, you know, in, in the three years coming off the 0 and 12, the first year we went 3 and 8. Uh, and, and we knew we had the makings of a good team. We had some good players we recruited. We played young guys. We played old guys. Uh, then the next year we went 5 and 6 uh, and uh, uh, just missed out on the winning season at, you know, at the end of the year. But the message in the offseason was simple. It was there's no, yes, we're doing this, we're three and eight, we're five and six, but there's no guarantee what you're going to do, the, the next one. Okay, so the guys bought into that. We started out with a, with a big win over my man's alma mater, which was huge. It hadn't been done. We hadn't beat him in eight tries, but we beat McNeese at home uh, in the goal one and in conference. We go on the road uh, to play that little team out of uh, College Station, Texas A&M, and we had a pretty good showing against them. Uh, and we lost, and then, so you know, we, we, we were all right, we knew where we wanted to be. Uh, we, since we lost to Sam Houston, who's one of the top teams in the country, we won three in a row, and uh, we're four and one in the conference, and we're five and two overall. But I still tell our guys this, and uh, they, they hit me with this the other day. Somebody asked me on the radio show and said, Coach, you played three out of your four uh, next games out on the road. I said, well, I really don't know what you're talking about, because I only know my next game. And that's what we do. Our next game is against Incarnate Word after an open date, and we try to have a one-game season every week. And if our guys approach that mentally that way, then that's why we're going to have some success. So this week, uh, we're, we're open. Because, um, Ken and I have been gracious enough to invite me a couple times. We, we can never get here because we're always playing. And in college football, Tuesday is your biggest work day uh, that we do. So I was fortunate enough to be able to get here and come here. And I'm going to have to run out. We, you know, we practice at 2.30 today. But I, I thank you for having me. We, we're going to have a... a uh, rest week, I say rest week, we're going to practice three days, but we got to heal up a little bit. You play seven games uh, into the season after a, a really tough August uh, camp, and our guys are a little beat up like everybody is at this time of the year, so we're looking forward. Uh, we'll practice through Thursday, we'll give our guys off Friday and Saturday and get back to work on Sunday. So, But if anybody has any questions on anything, not too much recruiting I can answer, but I, some general stuff I can cover. Hey, Coach, um, congratulations on the success you Thank you. I mean, you've got a new school board, new field, and the place really does look great. I mean, you're right, it's a gym out there. And all that comes from winning, and so congratulations. Thank um, you very much. One, one play of last week's game uh, was right before the half. Um, you were calling timeout, and then you lobbied to have uh, extra time put on, but the, the officials said no, they got it right. Um, the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is um, it kind of hurt my feelings. I was a clock operator. <laughs> I thought you'd have more faith in it, Coach. You know? it, well, it was wasn't it outside. Was it outside the one minute? It was a 101 or something, like, and, yeah. it and it couldn't run it off. So uh, right, right, right. I think sometimes I just argue, just to argue. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know what I'm talking about on some of those. Well, my real question is: I know you can't talk about a specific recruit, but I know you've gotten a couple of players from that Mississippi Junior League, that Junior College League that I work into. Um, I know the type of athlete, but I don't, let let the other people know what type of athlete you get out of that league that has helped you get to this success? Yeah, I think this, uh, I, I don't want to make a living uh, working out of junior colleges and doing that, but I think there's going to be times there's a need and there's a fit. Uh, I want to build it with the high school guys and, and you build that foundation and build that core. But sometimes you may lose a, an offensive lineman and, and a, a young guy is not quite ready to get in there, so you, you'll go to get one. Uh, we pulled out a couple guys, uh, offensive lineman, Demetrius Gleaton, who came with us in, in January. Um, and we, we get a transfer from uh, Georgia Southern, who's helping us this year. You pull in one of those guys. Uh, so we, if you can go into Mississippi Junior Colleges, but again, we're not just going to take any of them. It's got to be really a fit for us. 
You mentioned injuries. Uh, what's the status of Farcade? And uh, I believe Joel Dolary got hurt in the previous week, too. Yeah, uh, Chase got hurt uh, a couple weeks ago. So the, the week after we played, uh, we were playing against Northwestern. He didn't practice all week. So he couldn't even. It was, it was really as early as Friday. Uh, he was still had a bummed up shoulder. He had an AC uh, injury and he couldn't throw. So we were going with uh, Tuscany Figaro, our backup. And then, uh, so in the second quarter of that game against Northwestern, Tuscany gets hurt. And he has the same injury on the same throw and shoulder. So we go in at halftime with him. Um, he, he gets a little treatment. He comes out in the second half, says he can go. And then all of a sudden it's getting worse and worse and he couldn't throw. So Chase said, Coach, I think I can throw. So he goes on the side and uh, and he throws, and he says, hey, the trainer comes in and says, hey, you got good good spin on it, let's let's go with him. So Chase was tugging at me the whole time to go in. I was like, get away from me. We're going to get him in. So uh, it was in the middle of a drive, and we said, let's let him finish drive. We fit, switched to the fourth quarter. It was in the middle of the drive. We said, hey, so he's ready to go. And, you know, he came out, and he threw his first pass and got a completion, kind of just lifted us up and uh, led us down to uh, to the victory. So he, he's completely healed. He's, he had a good week last week. Um, and so uh, we look at, you know, rest of the season now, we're trying to get the other one back. That was actually the first game he's missed in his career, I think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and people were saying, what are you, crazy? You're not starting what? I mean, but he, he, he couldn't take a snap all week, and he, and he didn't do it. Uh, Joe Dullery, uh, unfortunately, same thing two weeks ago. He went down with an injury, uh, a knee, uh, so he'll be, he'll be done for the rest of the year. Uh, yeah, Jean-Pierre got an ankle last week, a high ankle sprain, but he'll, he'll be fine, so the open day will help him. Coach, I know you don't want to look ahead, but that's the media's job to look ahead. So, uh, how many uh, how many bids do you think the Southland will get when you're talking about postseason and kind of crystal ball and that? How, do, how does that work? Well, it's funny because my uh, AD came in this morning and he was talking about the same thing about, uh, he goes, I know you don't want to look at it, but you may have to look down the road and things we're going to do. But there's so many good teams in our conference when you look at Central Arkansas, uh, and uh, Sam Houston already ranked in the top 10 in the East. Uh, and then you have us ranked number 20, and then you have Southeastern right there who's, uh, who's playing extremely well. And so you might, you know, you got five teams right there that's bucking to really get into the, into the playoffs. So the thing that we got to do, Ed, is we just got to take care of ourselves. And you know, I don't want to put a number on it. I mean, you never know. Uh, we just got to get to the next and try to get to number six and then try to get to seven if you can. And obviously eight or nine wins would really help you and can get you in. Yes, hey, sir. Coach, congratulations on what you're doing, like Thank Bobby you. says. Two things. How did you keep Chase? Because I know during the senior year, a lot of people were pushing for him after he'd already committed to you. And two, did coming to Nichols is because you were there before or the opportunity if you build a good team to get into the playoffs? Well, I, I think the thing with Chase, it, it came down to the wire to the last minute. I mean, it was the Tuesday night, and Slade, you remember this, how it goes down to recruiting the night before the signing day. People are still trying to tug and get you to sign. And uh, he was torn, but, I mean, I think it was his faith and with his family, such a good family background, and that, you know, when he made a commitment to something, that's what he wanted to do. But, you know, he had some Power 5 schools, you know, that were still after him and wanted him to go there. But I think he wanted to make a difference. And uh, he wanted to come in and be the man and be the starter uh, uh, right away, and he's done that. He is a difference maker. And, and I think kind of the same thing, you know, the job, I, I saw it, Ed, you can be successful, you can have a championship team there. I know some people thought I was crazy to say that, but, you know, uh, Nichols is a great place. It has the facilities, it has the, the, the region that we can do that. And uh, if we can get into the playoffs, it'll be a big step for us, and that's part of our goal, which is one of the things is get to a playoff game because you, you hadn't been there in so many years. And then we want to get there and try to win off a playoff game and then see if you can make a little run and put them back to back. That's it. All right. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.